Have you ever had the hair on the back of your neck stand up straight as if a ghost passed through you? Today, I'm super excited to share with you 25 of the top creepy superstitions from around the world. I'm going to delve into detail and share myths with you from other cultures that will give you goosebumps. Hi, I'm Sydney, mirror myth geek with two way mirrors. Let's get started. Number one, Benin, voodoo dolls. While the origin of voodoo dolls is somewhat up for debate, most believe that it was in Benin, a country in West Africa. Over the years, there have been changes to the concept of voodoo dolls depending on what country you're in, but let's talk about the original. The voodoo doll is usually a soft doll made of cloth and isn't really any different than the average rag doll you saw as a kid. They can be used for all sorts of things from love to cursing. Different colors of dolls can mean different things as well, such as blue for love and peace, or black to either summon negative energy or to get rid of it. The creepy part is the pins that are shoved through the doll to really make the magic happen. The different colors can be applied to the pins too. To communicate with the correct spirit, it's best to have a piece of hair or a piece of clothing from the intended person to pin to the doll as a token. Voodoo dolls are typically used for well-being rather than evil, but it's still a spooky concept. Number two, England. Bloody Mary. Standing in a dark bathroom and chanting Bloody Mary into the mirror was a sleepover tradition when I was younger, but how did it start? The origin of Bloody Mary will definitely give you the creeps, but it's also a pretty sad story. Queen Mary I, the first queen of England, is the real Mary in this superstition. After her father, King Henry VIII, had divorced her mother, he married Anne Boleyn, who had Parliament declare Mary an illegitimate heir to the throne, putting her last in line. However, a few marriages and deaths later, Mary did become queen. Mary wanted to unite her people under one religion, which resulted in the Marian persecutions. Approximately 240 men and 60 women were burned at the stake for being Protestants, which gave her the infamous name of Bloody Mary. My thoughts on this one are that Mary was really just trying to prove her position. After almost being stripped of her royal status and a couple false pregnancies that everyone in England scoffed at, Mary needed something to put the fear of God into her people. Was burning 300 people alive the best way to do it? Probably not. Number three, Japan. The number four. In the United States, it's a commonly known thing for the number 13 to be unlucky, which I'll explain later. But in Japan and several other East Asian countries, the number four is even more unlucky than number 13. The word for the number four in these countries sounds very similar to the word for death. Their fear of the number four actually has a name, tetraphobia. This superstition isn't anything to joke about, as it actually affects more than you'd think. In Beijing, you can't have a number four anywhere on your license plate. You also won't find a button with the number four in the elevators of apartment buildings or hospitals because they prefer to skip the fourth floor altogether. Telephone numbers are often missing a four in them too. Number four, Europe, knocking on wood. Supposedly this is just in Europe, but I was born and raised in the USA and used this all the time as a kid. However, it originated in Europe. The story goes back to medieval times when the churches claimed to have pieces of Jesus's cross. Officials of the church acclaimed that knocking on wood would bring you good luck. The most it has ever brought me is a deeper connection with my family as we all say it in unison when they need some luck after doing something to hope it pans out well when it probably won't. Example, say you're putting a frame together but ran out of corner brackets, but you still need to send it that day. That's when you would say, well, it's worth a shot, knock on wood, that the glue holds. Almost like crossing your fingers. Number five, Korea, fan death. In Korea, it's believed that if you leave an electric fan running in a secluded or closed off room, you're sure to die. If you're anything like me, the hum of a fan at bedtime is essential for a restful sleep. So my question is, is it worth the risk? While there hasn't been any hard evidence of this myth being true, it's likely that this originated as a way of scaring people into being more conservative with their energy use. Go ahead and hit that like button if you would gladly risk it all for your sleep routine. Just to play it safe, I'll be sleeping far away from any moving fans. I don't know about you, but I definitely remember that scene from Final Destination that involved a fan death. Ouch. Number six, Russia. Lucky empty bottles. If you're in Russia and you're needing a little extra luck, you're supposed to place an empty bottle on the ground. This dates back to the 19th century in Paris when Russian soldiers were charged per empty bottle that was left rather than per bottle they bought. So they would hide them below the table. While I could definitely use some luck in my life, I'd rather have a full bottle of Russian vodka than an empty one. Number seven, Greece. 
broken mirrors. So a lot of us know that if you break a mirror, it's supposed to cause you seven years of bad luck. But how did that story start? The origin of this story was in Greece in the early 1900s. If you were sick, you would dip a mirror in water and then look into the glass. If your reflection was warped, then it was said that you were near death. My bathroom mirror is always foggy and distorted when I get out of the shower, so I'm not sure what that says about my health, but I guess only time will tell. If you're trying to avoid this spooky superstition altogether, get a hydrophobic spray and apply it to your mirror every two weeks. It'll be fog-free even after a hot shower. Number eight. United Kingdom, rabbit, rabbit. On the first day of each month, you're supposed to say rabbit, rabbit as soon as you wake up. This is supposed to bring an abundance of luck. If you forget to say it that morning, saying tabar tabar right before you go to bed that night is supposed to give you the same lucky effect. Personally, I've always found rabbits to be lucky. My grandpa always had a rabbit's foot on his keychain, and after he passed, there was a small brown rabbit that would sit under the bench outside my dorm. It always gave me a safe feeling when I saw it, so this will definitely be a tradition that I adopt. Number nine, Rwanda. Eating goat meat. I've spent my entire life in Ohio, and I've had goat meat, but I wouldn't say that it's one of the most common meats of choice around here. In Rwanda, women specifically are warned to stay away from goat meat due to the fact that it could cause them to grow facial hair. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think I could rock a beard if I had to. Number 10, Canada. Pregnant cravings. I feel like people stereotypically relate Canada with maple syrup and hockey. That's what I see in movies anyway. Has anyone ever heard anything about Canada and babies with fish heads though? Well, supposedly, if a pregnant woman is craving fish but doesn't give in to her cravings, her baby will come out with a fish head. I'm not sure how that works or what it would look like, but if you're pregnant, just say yes to those cravings for the love of mankind. Fish head mutations sound like they belong in Magic the Gathering. Number 11, Mexico. Two mirrors. Placing two mirrors across from each other can create a really cool effect. The reflections bouncing off of each other creates an illusion of infinite reflection, so there's a never-ending appearance of mirror inside of mirror. However, in Mexico, mirrors facing each other are said to create a doorway for the devil. This is the type of thing that reminds me of old rundown carnivals for some reason. I knew there was always an eerie feeling in fun houses. Number 12, Italy. Jinx. Here in the US, if you say the same thing at the same time as someone, people will say jinx. Jinxing something typically means to bring bad luck. I've never really given it much thought until I read about the Italian superstition behind it. In Italy, when you say the same thing at the same time as someone else, you're dooming yourself to never be married. This sounds like a blessing or a curse, depending on the person. If you want to attempt to undo your misfortune, you're supposed to touch your nose as fast as you can. Can we go back to the good old days when jinxing somebody just meant that you owed them a soda? Number 13, South America, swept off your feet. I grew up hearing the superstition that if a broom falls, it's supposed to mean that company is coming later that day. However, a new broom superstition that I've heard about relates to the jinx superstition in Italy. If someone sweeps over your feet with a broom, you're once again doomed to be single for the rest of your life. Superstitions seem to be on love's side though, because this one can also be quickly undone if you spit on the broom right away. Number 14, Ireland, magpies. Magpies are a black and white bird known for stealing shiny objects. This superstition is Pretty popular in Europe as a whole, but Ireland specifically takes magpies very seriously. There's a children's nursery rhyme that gives different meanings based on how many magpies you see. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret, never to be told, eight for a wish, nine for a kiss, 10 for a bird, you must not miss, 11 is worse, 12 for a dastardly curse. Even if there's a chance at silver or gold, I don't think I want to risk the curse. Number 15, Ireland and Scotland. Jack-o'-lanterns. This is a superstition near and dear to my heart. Halloween has been my favorite holiday for as long as I can remember, so doing a little research on this one was so much fun. We all know that carving pumpkins is a Halloween tradition. I've never really questioned it much, it's just a thing we do. It makes kids happy, the inside is weird and slimy, all good things. This superstition originated in the Celtic origins of Europe and tells the story of a man named Jack who was sentenced to an afterlife in purgatory. 
He roamed the earth, lighting his way with a turnip that he carved out that had a piece of lit coal in it from the devil himself. Hence the term Jack O'Lantern. Spooky. 16. Egypt. Walking under a ladder. Walking under a ladder has poor consequences in many parts of the world, but dates back as far as ancient Egypt. The Egyptians believed that a ladder against the wall formed a sacred triangle which should not be disrupted. And in France, prisoners had to walk under a ladder leading to the gallows, which makes sense as to why they see ladders as unlucky. I always thought my mom was just looking out for my safety when she told me not to walk under ladders, but maybe she was looking out for bad omens. 17. India. Unlucky 13. As a kid, I remember a lot of people's lucky number being 13, and I'm not sure if that was supposed to be ironic or not due to all the belief of bad luck behind the number. This originated in ancient India, where it was believed that it was unlucky for 13 people to sit at a table together. Oddly specific, but understandable. And of course, we all know about Friday the 13th being known as a wavy day, especially if it happens at the same time as a full moon. Much like Japan's number four phobia, a lot of hotels in the US skip the 13th floor in hotels. What do you think? Is 13 just another number or is it cursed? Comment your lucky number below. Number 18, Turkey. Chewing gum at night. In the 1980s movie Gremlins, you aren't supposed to feed these fluffy little creatures after midnight or things get a little scary. Well, in Turkey, if you chew gum at night, you're essentially chewing on the flesh of the deceased. I'm not sure where the correlation is there, but chewing gum may be ruined for me even during the day now. Number 19, Japan. Hide your thumbs. Cemeteries are kind of a spooky place in general, I think, but this tradition makes them a little spookier. The word used for thumb in Japan translates into parent finger, so it's customary to hide your thumbs when walking through a cemetery to keep your parents safe from evil spirits. I've heard of holding your breath when you walk past a cemetery, but hiding your thumb seems like a good option too. Number 20, the Philippines. Lightning attractor. They say lightning never strikes the same place twice. Well, it might not anyway, as long as you aren't wearing red. In the Philippines, wearing red during a thunderstorm is bad luck, as it will attract lightning. So unless you're trying to add a little spark to your life, I suggest turning to a different color of the rainbow during a storm. Number 21, Vietnam. Nightmare mirror. If you put a mirror at the end of your bed, it's believed that you will be plagued with nightmares. Honestly, this one makes the most sense out of all of them to me. I have a mirror across from my bed, and if I catch a glimpse of myself, I automatically panic and think that there's somebody in my room. I may just be a scaredy cat, but this superstition is one that I'm gonna stick with. 22, Germany, toasting with water. Giving a toast in someone's honor is generally supposed to be a good thing. We give toasts at weddings, birthdays, any type of celebration really. However, the luck and the action all depends on what's in your cup. In Germany, if you toast with water in your cup, then you're wishing the person you're toasting with into an early death. So if alcohol isn't your thing, I'd recommend giving a toast with a nice sparkling juice, just to be safe. Number 23, Argentina, seventh son. In Argentina, your seventh son is said to be fated to be a werewolf. So much for lucky number seven. The wolf-like creature is supposed to emerge from the boy on the first Friday after his 13th birthday. So not only is the poor kid going through puberty, but he'd also have to navigate his new wolfy tendencies. Talk about a coming of age story. Though if you already have six little boys running around, chaos should be something that you're semi used to, so I don't think a werewolf in the family would be so bad. Number 24, Switzerland, wedding tree. In Switzerland, it's common for newlyweds to either plant a tree outside their new house or to actually incorporate the tree into their wedding ceremony. This tradition is supposed to bless the couple's union and bring them good fortune and fertility. I think this is actually a very sweet superstition and it's not only a nice gesture for the couple, but a nice gesture for the environment as well. It's not necessarily spooky unless you're scared of commitment, in which case this would be the most terrifying superstition of them all. Number 25, USA, burning old dishcloths. An old American superstition that makes sense more for cleanliness reasons rather than superstitious reasons would be burning old dish towels. It was said that if you brought the dish towels from your old house into a new house, you were bringing all the mess and bad luck of your old place with you. I'm all for fresh starts and buying new things, so I like the idea of this one too. All right guys, that is all I have for you on superstitions around the world. I know that there's so many I didn't mention, so drop a comment below and let me know which ones that I missed. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to punch that like button in the face. I love you guys so much, thank you for watching, bye guys.